Okay. Well, oh uh, yeah, I should have this over here. Well, I'll just put this up here. Uh, so streams um, starting Monday. So I figured out how to make a second channel with my YouTube account. So I've got two channels now. And so I just haven't implemented it on my computer in terms of the streams. But on Monday, I will put a link on our web page, uh, Moodle page, for all future videos. And so you'll just be able to go to my second YouTube channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that I can uh, start monetizing it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to monetize it. Oh, uh, I, I forget. It's like Noonan Loves Math or something. I for, don't, don't search for it. It's not going to be. There's nothing on it now. Oh, okay. You, <laughs> let me find it. Now that you, you're begging to find out. Just a minute. Hold on. Uh, settings. Where is settings? Okay. Uh, view advanced channel. Where's my? Oh, manage my channels. Okay. Here it is. So if you're, I, I need to make a little icon for it. Uh, it's uh, oh Noonan Math Classes. That's boring. So it's all all one word Noonan Math Classes. So here's I've got oh these are suggestions. They want me to watch this school TikToks that are actually relatable. I don't think so. But uh, I'll I'll by Monday I'll have it. Yeah, you you're gonna be the first subscriber with no videos. Uh, well, I'll put a link. Don't worry. I'll put a link on uh, on our webpage by Monday. So that's exciting that we have that to look forward to. So I won't have to do this silliness as much in terms of uploading and everything. Uh, okay, so why did I just do that? I don't know. Here's what we're doing. We're going to do this demand curve. So demand curve is P equals 450 over X plus seven, and I want to know what's happening when P is equal to 10. So uh, here is my thing. Oh, and it's it's asking about the consumer surplus, is that right? Yes, okay. So let me just remind you, first of all, what consumer surplus is. Consumer surplus is going to be the integral from zero to whatever X you have there. We'll, we'll get a diagram here in a minute. Zero to X of um, P of X minus whatever price we're charging. And so the, the way to think of this is this is how much money consumers are not paying, but they would be willing to pay. So like for, um, I don't know what, for this mug, or better yet, for some chai tea, I might be willing to pay $2, but they're giving it to me for free. And so... I'm saving $2. But even if I paid a dollar for it, I would still be saving a dollar from what I would be willing to pay. So anyway, the, the way to think of this is that you have this curve. Here's this curve, whatever it is. And then you have the actual price. And because this is the demand curve, this is the number that you'll actually sell. But all of these people that are represented by these points would have been willing to pay more. And so uh, all of this is the so-called consumer surplus. And so, oh, there's the integral <coughs> up there. That's why it looks the way it does. Okay, so let's actually do this. This is going to equal the integral of 450 over x plus 7 minus 10 evaluated from 0. Uh-oh, what is x? Oh, I know. To find x, I have to plug p into this. 10 is equal to 450 over x plus 7, which means that x plus 7 is equal to 45, which means that x is equal to 38. 38, when p is equal to 10. So one way to think of this is if you set the price at 10, you will sell 38 isn't very many, but if we only have a few, if this is like this very special product that we only have a limited run of, then that makes sense that it would be that way. Uh, and so let's put that at the top, 38. And then the rest of this is straightforward. You're just doing a straightforward integral. So I'll just blow through this. This is 450 times the natural log of x plus uh, 7 minus 10x evaluated from 0 to 38. 
and that's going to equal 450 ln of 45 minus 450 ln of C, uh, 7, 7 minus 380. Sorry, that's a little bit mixed up here if it bothers you. This and that are the 38, and then this one is from the 0. So whatever that is, I don't know what that's going to be. 450 times that natural. And actually, does it say, does it say we want a decimal, or can we just type it in like that? Find out. <coughs> Round your answer. Oh, yeah, you need a decimal, sadly. So you'd actually have to compute it using a calculator and then round. So does that answer the question, Gina, for this one? Uh, yeah. Mine is too. Did you do all this and you got it the wrong answer? Yeah. I don't think I did the natural one. Mm. All right. If you still get it wrong, let me know. Uh, although, I guess you'd have to ask for an extension. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know if it's just the rounding too. Oh, it's not too bad. Oh, excellent. All right, is there anything else from this particular assignment that's a problem? That last one, wait, was the last one special? Hold on. Did we do? Oh, no, that was boring. Uh, revenue flows into a company at this rate. Yeah, so this is another one that's just like a Calc 1 problem, just the integral of that over the first six years. Boring. Yeah, the only one that was kind of exciting was the middle one. Uh, and so because the, the middle one was exciting, I made the quiz like it. And I might have made the quiz a little too exciting. So um, after I give you the quiz, I'll also give you a hint um, up here. And so again, let me give you the quiz. It's, um, there's some, there's one. Okay, because I know that you lose your minds if it's not identical to the homework. Uh, let me just do this for you and point out then when P, whoops, not that. When P is equal to, hold on a minute, it says, Oh, it says x equals 50. When x equals 50, p is equal to 1,000 over uh, 2501. Wait, is that a square? Yeah, it's squared. Mm. Which is approximately equal to 4. It's 4 point something, but you can use 4 for the price. So I gave you the X and I gave you the price. And one other thing just to help you is to remind you this little fact that you might have forgotten is equal to our tan. So those two are going to help you. And for the video watchers, I'm about to do this up here.
Oh, make sure your calculator's in radians when you do this. If you do degrees, you're not going to get the same answer as me. All right, don't panic, but I'm going to come get it in just a little bit. I'm just finishing up my attendance, marking people absent. Wait, these people snuck in. Yeah. What's wrong? Oh, yeah, it's point 0.4, isn't it? Hmm. If you used 4, then you'll get the answer that I got. Interesting, yeah. It's because I was doing this too quickly. Yeah, you're right. It should be point 0.4, thank you. Uh, I'll do it twice then, so as penance. Yeah. Change this. Wrong with me. Here, unfreeze so you can see. Unfreeze. There it is. Almost the same answer. So I'll blame it on the fact that I didn't have my chai tea yet. I'll go over there and get some. All right, so maybe you can finish things up. Uh, oh, I'm going to finish up my attendance. Oh, yeah, this guy's quitting. It's good. All right, submit it. So if you use 4 or 0.4, it doesn't matter. It's the, basically almost the same answer. Uh, so you're all set? You're happy? 
have all the quizzes were quizzed out that was painful yeah I should have made it identical to the homework shouldn't I uh, yeah that's the lesson I need to learn uh, but uh, here's what I got oh first of all let's unfreeze here we go okay just so you know I've got these two so I've got the two answers the correct answer and then the wrong answer and if you have either of them you're good but uh, that's the one that would be actually the the one that you should have used because if you had not fol uh, followed my instruction. Anyway, here's my demand function. And then I know that the, the surplus when x equals 50, this is p. Uh, the, the formula is this. Oh, first of all, this is the wrong one. This is the way, see, I put p equals 4. Remember, it's the function itself, demand function, minus the price integrated from 0 to 50. Uh, and so this is what I got when I did that. I got 1351. I know you had 1350.97 or whatever it was. I just was lazy and I rounded. Uh, and then here's the correct, the corrected. So down here is the corrected version. And the only thing that I changed is this right here. And notice it's almost this, it just changed those two digits. Isn't that interesting? So I got 1531 instead of 1351. So if you have either of those answers, you're doing great. If you just have the integral, you're doing great. Well, mostly. Okay, we need to move on. What are we doing today? We're doing probability, seriously? Oh, I feel like not doing anything, but we'll have to do some probability. Okay, so continuous random variables. So it may feel like we're doing, wow, that looks weird. All right. So continuous, has anyone here had statistics yet? Few of you, statistics, remember statistics? Sure. So statistics, you deal with, uh, well, this is possibly familiar, continuous random variable. Uh, and uh, by the way, this is the end of this section. And then we move on to the chapter 11 stuff uh, on Monday. So that's why I wanted to slip this in today instead of starting the new section. We're starting something new on Monday. Anyway, the graph of this, uh, oh, that's, that's terrible. It's not rendering properly. Here, ignore this for a minute. I'll have to fix this. Um, anyway, this normal distribution. So if you're familiar with statistics, you've probably seen the normal distribution. And whenever I teach statistics, one of the things I make students do is I make them draw the normal distribution and shade the distribution. Did you have to do this? Let me show you what I mean by this. Is If I'm trying to find the probability that something is greater, let's do um, here. 
I'm sick of this. Let's do this. Uh, let's say I want to find the probability of finding a person who, uh, a male. So males have an average. Uh, yeah, that's average, by the way. Average height of uh, 69 inches. And the standard deviation for males is three inches. So it's just, you can look this up, CDC, they keep information about this. So there's the, the, for males. And if I asked for the probability that a male is bigger than 72 inches, do you remember doing this in statistics? Some of you do, some of you have no idea, but this is a statistics thing. You would do this, you would draw, or at least if you were in my class, you would draw this curve, and then you would put in the middle 69, and then you would put 72 somewhere over here, and then you would actually draw this line and shade. And the reason that I told students in statistics that we shade is because the area is the same as the probability. And so if you can visualize this area here, you can, it helps you to figure out what the probability is. Now, we ended up using Microsoft Excel to find those probabilities. And I don't know how you did it when you learned statistics, but you probably used some tool rather than, well, you can't do it by hand. So it's just the way it is. But this is an area, but it actually gives you a clue. You see, this area is a pretty small area. So if you had to guess what the percentage of the whole thing is, you might say, well, that's about 20%. Or maybe you'd argue, no, it's 15% or something like that. The truth is that that's about 16% um, about of the total area under this normal curve. But now you can kind of see why it is that we're interested in probability in the context of calculus two is we're gonna be computing probabilities and a probability is just an integral. So I would do this 72 to infinity of whatever this function is. Okay, so that's that's the general idea. Now, since my uh, PowerPoint is not going to work up there, I'm going to have to do it on here. Give me a sec. Find it. There it is. And let me find out what I'm interested in. There it is. Okay, so probabilities. So first off, uh, probability when we're talking about continuous random variables, which you don't have to remember all those words if you don't want to. This is just a quick introduction. Probabilities are integrals. That's the main thing to note. So here's a few um, properties of these density functions. You have a function f of x, little f of x, and that little f of x tells you the probabilities. And the way it tells you the probabilities is it tells you by computing the integral. So it turns out that the probability that you are less than or equal to a particular number is the integral from negative infinity to, in, to t of that function. I'll show you an example here in just a minute. Uh, so let's try it. Let me do this. Uh, f of x. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll get the next property as well here in just a sec. And then the probability that you're between two numbers is also just an integral. So that's why we're interested in this here. It's just another application, just like the business thing, just like the physics thing, the centroids, and that sort of thing, that we have applications to different fields in here. Okay, so we have this, um, just a minute, three x minus x squared, um, just a sec, here we go. So just to illustrate this, I've got this density function. Sorry, I need to do a quick uh, arithmetic here. Um, square root over 2. Oh, this is not going to be very nice. Um, I don't know what number to put here. Okay, here's what we're going to have to do. Uh, let's do this. C times this. So what you're going to find on your homework is you'll see problems sort of like this, where it gives you uh, what they, they say, this is a density function. And they're going to give you a range of values for which this is valid. 
and they're going to say, what is that constant? You see the constant in there? So this is what I was going to try to do in my head for this first example, but apparently I was unable to do it super quickly. So we're going to do it together. So to do this problem, we're going to use another property of density functions, and that is that the probability that something happens, here's an example, here's a die. Uh, so this is just, a, this isn't continuous, this is discrete, but what's the probability that something happens? I got a 100% chance that a number is going to happen when I roll this die. Oh, it's a six. But I knew that it would be some number. So there's a 100% chance that something will happen. It's a one this time. And so to translate this into density functions, what that means is that if you do the integral over the entire domain of your density function, you should get one. 100%, something will happen. Eventually, I guess that's what this says. And so we're going to use that property, O equals 1. So we're going to use that property to figure out what C is here. So you have this density function that describes sort of these incremental probabilities. Uh, like when you think of people's heights, our heights are all different. But if you increase sort of like if you say, what's the probability that someone's between 6 feet and 6, 1? That's different from between six feet and six two, is you have this, this incremental probability, because people could be any height, including six foot one and a half inches. I like to say that I'm six one, not true. I'm actually like six foot and half of an inch. So on a good day, if I make myself nice and tall, maybe I'm six one, especially if I use my hair as the, the mark there. But anyway, getting back to this, we're gonna use this information to compute this. So whenever you have a density function, step one is compute the integral of the entire domain. And we can make this easy on ourselves by moving that constant outside. I think your book likes to use uh, things like uh, k instead of c, but we can do this. Okay, so I know you can do this antiderivative, but this helps me if I have this, because then it lets you, you know, show off. Uh, but Sarah, what's the antiderivative of 3x? Very nice, 3x squared over 2. And then the other one there, uh, let's see, Sydney, what's the antiderivative of x squared? Very nice, x cubed over 3. So we've got those, and we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 3. So then you're just doing this, uh, whoops, got a little ahead of myself. So I'm just doing this and ignoring the C for now. We'll get the C in a minute. So what do I have here? I have 27 halves minus 27 thirds uh, minus 0. I know 27 thirds is 9. Uh, I guess I should, no. I'll do this first. Because 27 halves minus 27 thirds is 27 sixths. Now I'll cancel the threes. So that's going to be 9 halves. So there's my integral over the entire range of values. But remember that the, one of the properties of probability is that that entire range of values, you should get 100%. Something's going to happen at, uh, in, at this. So this should equal 1. So that means that 9 halves, whoops, not 9 halves. I have to multiply by 2 ninths, and I get that for C. So that means my probability density function is going to be 2 ninths of 3x minus x squared. So we got that. Now we can actually compute some probabilities. If this were the probability density function, well, let's say I want to know the probability that x is between 1 and 2. So that probability, whenever you see this, just think in terms of an integral from 1 to 2 of your density function, this so-called density function. There. Fortunately for us, we've already done most of the work here. 
And what I mean by that is we already did this integral. And that integral happens to be right here. So let me just copy that down. So we got the 2 ninths. This is going to be 3x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3. x equals 1 to 2. And then, uh, let's see, 2 ninths times, let's plug in our limits, 3 times 4 over 2 minus uh, 8 thirds, oops, minus, don't forget that lower limit, 3 halves minus 1 third. So I can make that bigger. Okay, a little bit of a mess here, 2 ninths times, let's see, that's going to be 8 halves, which is 4, minus 8 thirds, uh, whoops, minus 3 halves plus 1 third. Just uh, dealing with the negatives, collecting like terms. Okay, so 1 third and 8 thirds, that becomes 7 thirds. Ugh, this is not going to be nice, is it? 8, 5 halves, so we got 2 ninths times 5 halves minus 7 thirds. I think I got that right. Uh, so let's see, 2 ninths times 5 halves is going to be 5 ninths. <coughs> 2 ninths times 7 thirds is going to be 14 20 sevenths. Okay, so let's see. This is going to be multiply by 3. This will be 1 27. My final answer. That does not feel right to me. It's right? Okay, what's wrong? That could be what my problem is. Mm, the four should be a six. Thank you. See, if I just plugged this into my calculator, I would have been much better. Yeah. Like I said, it didn't feel right to begin with. So let's see if I can if I got it right now. That changes that. 6 is 12 halves minus, that's 9 halves. Ooh, interesting. So this is just 1. Ah, this feels better to me. So this will be 13 27. Ah, that's better. Yeah, it feels better. Here's why it feels, feels better to me, is because if you were to draw this density function, here's what it looks like. Here's 1. Here's two. And just like with the normal curve, I'm interested in the area here. And apparently the area is 13 27 of the entire area. So that's the probability. All right, that's not bad. Let's see what time it is. Can't quite end yet. It's okay. We can we can do the homework preview real quick. So give me a sec here to pull this up. And then, you know what we can do? Is we can also have some fun with sequences. But uh, not, not a, don't worry. I know you're worried that it's going to be something scary. It is not. Wait, where's my probability homework? Oh, do I not? Just a sec. I don't see it on my list here. Uh, my assignments. I didn't push it over to you. But, oh, the, you just don't want to do it? If we just don't have it? No, no, no. It's here somewhere. I just have to go dig it out. The problem is that they, they don't let me sort very easily here. So give me a sec. Almost there. Let's see if I find it. I went too far. This is chapter 8. Darn it, went too far again. Okay, well.
Okay, I'm not seeing it, so I'll have to I'll have to find it later. But it's gonna it'll be easy. It'll be similar to this. Um, so why is this like this? Just a minute. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can at least introduce uh, this thing. Just a sec. Find this. All right. Well, actually, I think what I'm going to have to do is we'll just start on Monday with the sequences. Then we won't have to, because I can't find that either. So I'll make sure that you have homework. I don't want to delay you. You can go get your chai if you if you want to. Um, but I'll I'll get the assignment. It'll be simple like these. Basically, just do an integral when it asks you for a probability. So stick around if you want to. I'm going to stop the stream so it doesn't uh, record. There it is.